Surprise! We have actually a healthy dish for us today on The Internet Chef. We're doing a pan-seared marinated swordfish and we're gonna serve it with a lyonnaise potato. Well, our version of lyonnaise anyway. There's a lot of different versions out there. But when you see this, it's healthy for us. So check this out, we're gonna love it. So what we're gonna do with the swordfish is, it's, it's actually awesome. Let's talk a little bit about the swordfish first. Um, I have a fishmonger that I deal with that's local. He goes into the, uh, the Boston Bayside Harbor every day. And he calls me, he tells me what's, he'll call me from his cell phone and say, see I'm holding this, I'm holding that. Do you want any of this, do you want any of that? And, um, and this stuff has never seen the freezer. So I would highly recommend, and, and I do this all the time, and I do drive people crazy. When I go to the grocery store, if you're gonna to go to the grocery store to buy fish, ask the, the, uh, the person behind the fish counter for a glove. Grab the fish and smell it for yourself. I want you to test that fish and make sure make sure it doesn't have any funny smell. You should get the freshest product you can for your money, especially where nothing's really cheap anymore. So you want to try to get try to get a fresh piece of swordfish. It is hard to find, but um, what we're going to work with today is we're going to work with a beautiful fresh piece of swordfish. We're going to set up a marinade, and in that marinade, we're going to get started on that in a second. But uh, in that marinade, it's going to sit. It's a very high citrus content. So with the marinade, you don't want it, You don't need to let it sit for very long. Marinades as a whole are intended to infuse flavor. So uh, where this one's going to be so high in citric acid, if you leave it there overnight, it'll end up cooking. So this marinade is super sexy. We have. Um, I've got soy sauce. We're going to start with soy sauce again. Another high acidic uh, ingredient. So I'm going to put about three quarters of a cup, and I've got three quarters of a cup of cider vinegar because I love the apple concept, especially here in the fall. Uh, and then I've got some orange juice, and this is about just under a cup of orange juice. It's about even right across the board. If you go three quarters of a cup of all three of those things, and then I've got some honey, and that adds the sweetness to it. If you add, a, 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 it's all about an even, um, even a, a, across the board, the same amount of each. That's perfect. And then what we'll do is we're just going to mix this up. And that's your foundation. And get that honey to dissolve in those acids. So it's soy, apple cider vinegar, orange juice, and honey. And it's almost like a little bit of a teriyaki. But remember, you can't leave it in there for long. If you leave it in there for up to an hour, you're golden. Then let's take some edge. We'll kiss that with some edge. Right in there, and I've got one lemon. What we're going to do is, again, high citrus. What we're going for here is a short marinade. So let's squeeze. It's okay if the seeds go in there because it's just a marinade. Now we're going to take this delightful, delicious, beautiful piece of swordfish. And we're going to set it right in there, let that rest for about an hour. Now you can put it right in your refrigerator and forget about it. You can start working on your potatoes. We're going to work on the uh, compound butter that we're going to put on top. Yeah. I said it was healthy, but I mean, come on, it's our show, let's be realistic. So we're going to set this aside, we'll get right into the, uh, the potatoes and the compound butter, and then we'll bring it all together. So what we want to do is we want to set this, we're going to make this compound butter ahead of time and set this aside as well, because what we want to do is, uh, what this compound butter is going to be for is we're just going to dollop it on the top of the swordfish when we're done searing it. Uh, and we're going to cook it right in the saute pan, as we plate it up, it's just a little dollop on top. But I've got a pound of butter here, but the good thing about this is you'll be able to freeze this um, and, and save it for future times. Now, if you want to cut this recipe down by a quarter or down by a half, that's perfectly fine. Uh, here in the restaurant, I'm going to do the full pound because I know I can use this easily in one dinner service. But it's just to kind of show you, and we can even scale that recipe for you too, so you can really see. But I have um, some house roasted peppers. And what these are, are roasted peppers, and I'm going to throw them right here on the cutting board because I want to give them a little bit of knife work. And I've got three colors of peppers here. I've got red, green, and yellow. And really, all I want to do is I want to mince them up real fine. Then I have some fresh parsley, and I have some minced garlic, and then we'll pop some edging at the end. 
And, and really all we're trying to do is we're trying to give a little bit of an essence to that butter because uh, the roasted red pepper, the roasted peppers are the ones that the featured ingredient that we really want to showcase in that butter. So when that butter melts down, that sort of just is going to draw in all that flavor. So we're going to go ahead and take a knife to this. And you can roast these, you can saute them in a pan if you want. You can roast them over an open flame, which is my method of choice. Uh, my guys here, what they'll do is they'll cut them into chunks and they'll either saute them over high heat or they'll hit them right over the open flame on the char boiler. And usually when they saute them, they deglaze the pan with just a little bit of marsala wine. And what that does is it adds a little sweetness. It brings the sweetness out in the peppers. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop this up real fine right here, just as if you were chopping parsley. And what I've done is I've got probably about three quarters of a cup combined. But if I was, was going to guess, I'd say probably two peppers total. And we'll throw that right into the one pound of butter. And like I said, the great thing about this is this butter is going to be universal. You can freeze it, you can save it, you can put it on something else. Um, what we'll do now is we'll take this, we'll add probably about well, a half cup of chopped fresh parsley, and about two heaping teaspoons minced garlic, and then of course, a compound butter would not be complete without some sexy edge. So then I'll take a spoon. Now the, the butter I took out a few hours ago and I let it temper in a little time, so it's kind of soft. And that's the idea, you want it to be soft. And I'm just gonna mash the peppers and the salt the, the edge, I mean, the pepper, the edge, the parsley, the garlic, I'm going to mash that all right into that butter. We'll fold it right in. And if you have a mixer, you want to use a mixer, that's fine. I prefer to do things the old fashioned way so everybody can kind of see you know, what it's like in its rawest state. You can throw right this right in your mixing bowl with a, uh, a whip, not a whip attachment, but a, um, a paddle attachment. And this stuff will come together delightfully for you. And the last ingredient that I want to add to this. I've got the other lemon here. I'm just going to cut this in half. And I'm going to squeeze just about a half a lemon. The lemon goes right into that butter. And that is going to draw some awesome flavors out. Now be careful because I just dropped a little seed in there. You want to watch out for that. Because you don't want that in the butter to melt down on the fish. So we'll just keep it full. Finish this up. Now the great thing about this too is here at the restaurant we have a, what's called a casino butter. And it's very similar to this, but there's a little bit more ingredients in there. We throw some bacon in it sometimes, sometimes we throw some breadcrumbs in. And what we do is we'll wrap it in parchment paper into a tube and then freeze it. And then what we'll do is we'll cut it into coin medallions and just set that coin on top of, say, like a, a scallops in a casserole dish, splash it with wine and bake it like that. And then what happens is the butter melts, but the crumbs stay on top and it browns up nice. It's really great. So this is a, a, a that's traditionally one of the uh, ways, or clams casino, that sort of thing. That's one of the ways that um, that you can utilize the butter on seafood. All right, so that's our butter. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside, and we'll talk a little bit about lionese potatoes. So when I was working at a hotel way back in the day. Uh, one, of the, one of the side dishes that we prepared on a regular basis was what was called a lionese potato. And really what a lionese potato meant to me as a young line cook was a basic sautéed potato with chicken stock, uh, caramelized onions, garlic, fresh parsley, and salt pepper. So uh, what we've done is we've actually brought in a, uh, I'm, I'm kind of trying to tie in a little bit of a, an anodized encore here, is Take some leftover potato you might have in the walk-in, in the, walk in, in the refrigerator, in the, uh, like say you, you, you made a bunch of baked potatoes and somebody didn't want baked potato, you end up having cooked potato in your fridge. It's a great way to utilize something that you already have on hand. Or you can go ahead and just microwave a potato in the, in the, uh, in the microwave or baked potatoes and just slice them up. And, uh, and that's all we're going to do. We're going to take a fully cooked potato. You can do red potatoes, you can do white potatoes, it doesn't even matter. But you can just take the potato, even if it's uh, um, already peeled, that's fine too. We're going to leave the skin on because I think it adds a little dimension to it, adds a little texture and flavor. But we're just going to slice it. And I've got two potatoes here, which will be enough for three people, really. Good sized bakers. 
And you can see that they're fully cooked already, and that's perfectly fine. Just all we're going to do is we're going to give them a quick saute and hit them with all those ingredients we talked about. So now I'm going to grab my stove. Get a pan, good and hot. And one of the way, another way to do mayonnaise potatoes, one of the ways that I remember uh, vaguely in my mind is we would get the saute started and then we would finish them in the oven and let the potatoes brown up. And sometimes they would put like cheese on them, you could put some agiago or parmesan on them and just kind of melt the cheese down too. That would be more of it was more of a casserole side. But if we're, what we're going to do here is we're just going to saute with those ingredients. I've got some pre-caramelized onions and I've got some nice chicken stock here. And then I have our garlic parsley and what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go wet the pan with some olive oil because I want to get the, uh, get the potatoes starting to saute. Now I've got the pre-caramelized onions ahead. If you have regular onions you can slice them up but now's the time that you would throw them in there because you would want that to get that oil, give the oil that flavor. So let's go ahead and get right into this. And I'm gonna, so I added about probably about three quarters of a cup of already caramelized onions and that's really just so we can kind of speed up the process. You can do this from a raw steak. Teaspoon of garlic, a little more than a teaspoon. Yeah, baby. There's no scent better than onions and garlic and oil sauteing. None. Maybe you can throw some of those peppers in there. All right, so what we want to do is, what we're trying to do is give this, these potatoes a little bit of a sear. Give them a little bit of a pan sear. You can really see them starting to burn up and you know brown up a little bit on the sides and get some of that oil on them. So, you don't really want to break them up too much, but to saute them as best you can. And we'll give them a flip and a toss. I'm going to finish them with some chicken stock and be perfect. Go ahead and throw a couple of good heavy tinges of parsley on there. Now you can use a spoon to flip them, or you can saute them like this. I got one little guy in the corner here that doesn't want to move. And that's a good indication of when you want to add your stock, is when everything really starts frying. Whoops. What not to do, one on one, be careful. Alright, so we're gonna let these brown up just a little bit more. Actually, now's the time we want to add probably about a teaspoon of that. Maybe a little heavier teaspoon. And then chicken stock. I have probably about a cup and a half. Oh, listen to that glorious sound. Can you bring that chicken stock up? Yeah, in this flavor profile, how can you not taste this? Oh my goodness. See, the great thing about the, um, you almost get that oven taste from the baked potatoes, having them pre-cooked, you almost get that oven taste out of it too. It's really another nice phenomenal touch. But again, it's a great way to utilize leftovers. Cook through your fridge, you got some cooked potatoes that you gotta use up, it's perfect. You don't just have to make home fries out of it. And then I've got, yes, I know. Got a little bit of butter. I'm just gonna add in there. Just to kind of bring it all down. And so we'll let we'll that butter melt right in that chicken stock. As these guys roll, wow, look how nice these things look. Oh, they're one of my favorite kinds of potatoes. We used to do these whole at the, at the hotel. We roast them whole and then cut them with a knife after they came out of the oven and roast them again. Same ingredients, just did it in the oven. So we were doing it for 100 people. We didn't have a saute pan big enough. But um, oh, one of my favorites. Absolutely delicious. And they used to go crazy for it. And this is in a nice fine dining place too. And having the potatoes pre-cooked, see how quick that was to put that side together? So actually I'm just gonna set the pan right on this plate over here. And now I'm gonna leave the burner going. We're gonna start to see the swordfish and wrap things up. Check this out. So we've got our pan preheated for the swordfish. We're also going to give it another kiss of olive oil. 
just to line the bottom of the pan. Now be careful with this, you want to make sure you drain off any excess liquid because water and oil do not mix. Now one of the things you could do if you wanted to put a really good sear on it is dredge it through flour. I think the natural um, natural reaction to the, because the, where soy fish is so dense, I think that it's going to give us a nice sear by itself. So uh, check out this trick. So you've got the oil in there and it's smoking, it's really good and hot. Tip the pan away from you, and I'm not sure if I've shown you this before, but tip the pan away from you and set your meat down, and then roll it back, let the oil roll back to it, because what's going to happen is if you try to put it in there, boom, it's going to splash, the oil's going to hit you hard, and you're gonna, it's going to be hard, it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt a lot, a lot. but um, yeah, this is actually too hot, so I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. And really what we want to do is we just want to give this thing a good sear on both sides. Oh yeah, baby. And with swordfish, it's not, it's not bad to, um, you can cook this medium. It's, it's okay if the medium size is a little pink like salmon. You know, it's not something that has to be cooked all the way through. Uh, you can get away with, um, you know, a nice, nice rare, medium rare, a lot of times it's Little, little raw inside that's perfectly fine. It really depends on your, the people that are going to eat it. But um, I prefer it cooked all the way. So what you can do is if you don't, if you're afraid that you're going to overcook it because the pan's too hot and it's really starting to burn, you can sear it on both sides. You take this pan like this and pop it right into the oven. That's perfectly acceptable. You can get away with that with no problem. Um, and let that cook for about 15 minutes at 350 degrees. It'll be cooked all the way through. Or you can serve it. You know, almost sushi style, just sear the two, the two sides and put the butter on the top and let it melt down and have it so it's pretty rare inside. And that's perfectly acceptable as well. So it's really all a preference thing and what you want. But uh, look at the colors on that ball. Are you getting that in a shot? I don't want to handle it too much because I don't want it to break on me. So in our plate presentation, I steamed up some vegetables. I did some butternut squash and some broccoli ahead. And all I did was I steamed them and I just added a pinch of the edge to them. You can probably melt a little butter down if you, if you feel so inclined. I've got our lionese potatoes right on there and I drizzled a little bit of broth over the top and a nicely seared swordfish, which uh, the, the marinade actually helped to bring some of that real rich color out in there because we had the soy sauce and there was a nice dark marinade. And all those citrus flavors kind of permeated that meat and that olive that sat there. So, Looks really, really good. The last thing we're going to do is we're just going to top it off with our compound butter. And we're going to take a nice, nice dollop of that roasted red pepper and garlic compound butter. And what you do is, just before you serve it, you just let that butter melt right on that hot swordfish. It's going to be delightful. Go right into the meat and the meat. That's awesome. So the wine that we chose today to go along with this awesome swordfish dish is a uh, is a Pinot Grigio that uh, Bob and I both sampled before we started cooking swordfish. And uh, one of the great flavors that we got off of it was a nice grapefruit on the back end, nice balance, and it, it really helped to kind of bring those flavors of the citrus marinade out from that swordfish. And, uh, and you can't go wrong with a, uh, a nice, and it's actually drier than most, but um, the name of it is Angelini Veneto Pinot Grigio. Nice, nice dry. It's actually very dry for being a regional pretty surprised. But uh, like I said, it has a, a nice strong enhanced citrus flavor and that goes really well with the, um, with the marinade that we put on that swordfish. It also balances with the roasted peppers, which is a very savory flavor. It kind of balances it off, so it's nice. Um, that being said, just wanted to say thank you for joining us and our madness, our magic, and our mayhem. We will see you next time.